Let's talk today about how to create and sell your own wedding planner. Now, just to be clear, I'm talking about a physical, actual wedding planner that you can touch and feel or a digital one that you can print out or use on GoodNotes. I am not referring to wedding planners that are event planners that are people, even though those terms are used synonymously, we're talking about the actual thing you write in. So let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa from Pretty Fabulous and I help online businesses create beautiful digital downloads using Adobe InDesign. So if this sounds like you or something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every day. That's not true. I post videos every Monday and Thursday and I do unboxings on Saturday. This is what happens when you take a small break from YouTube, you forget what you're doing, and what you're talking about. If you're wondering why I haven't done a video in so long, it's because I just couldn't get the tech figured out. I have this super expensive mic and when I hit, hooked it up to my DSLR, it just gave a lot of feedback and it wasn't working but I figured it out. I have a new monitor that I'm looking at. I know you can't see it. And I also have the sound coming from the computer. So I have disconnected my sound from my video. It's much better, works nicer. It's a little harder to edit, but it's gonna work out. Okay, <laughs> fingers crossed. All right, so let's get into today's content, which is how to create and sell your own wedding planner. Now, I will be coming out with a brand new wedding planner template. Uh, and I shouldn't say like a wedding planner template. I'm coming out with a new planner template. It happens to be a wedding planner. That sounded like I come out with different wedding planners every month, that is not true. Every month I come out with a different planner template and it could be based on any theme, whether it's a budget planner or a moon planner or an astrological planner. In fact, you can vote on what the planner is for next month. So if you are uh, watching this on YouTube, there is a tab, if you go to my channel, there are tabs across the top like videos, playlists, go to the tab that says community, and inside of there, you'll see a poll and you can vote on what planner you would like me to create as a template for next month. So voting closes on Sunday, March 29th. So the last Sunday of every month is when the voting will stop. So let's get into today. So how do you create and sell your own wedding planner? So the first thing you need to do is you need to decide if you're gonna create one, just a traditional wedding planner that could apply to anybody, or you are going to pick a client avatar, like maybe you're gonna do the budget bride or the um, adventure bride, or maybe you're going to do it based on the wedding theme and not the bride, like maybe it is a destination wedding or it is a underground scuba diving water wedding or something like that. Uh, so all of these different things are ways that you can actually differentiate your wedding planner. And we will be talking about that on Sunday because I am behind on videos because I had all these tech issues and I did some live streams, but I do want to talk more about wedding planners if that's something you're interested in. So I actually have a video coming out Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and we will be doing the launch of the wedding planner on Monday. So just stick around on this channel, make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss anything. All right. So the second step is you need to determine the format. So do you want this to be like a full service wedding planner or do you want something quick and easy like a checklist? So tomorrow I will be doing an unboxing of the Erin Condren wedding planner checklist. And this is really more for the minimalist bride or possibly for the all out, like money is no object kind of bride. And she has hired a wedding planner but maybe she wants like a small little list or something to refer to to give her some ideas or think about, or maybe she wants to just make sure the wedding planner is doing all the things that she should be doing. And that's why you have checklists. Or you could just be like me. I just love checklists in general. So you need to determine if you want like a huge full service one, a small checklist, um, or maybe you want to write a book. You could write an ebook. It could go either along with your wedding planner or it could just be standalone as is. Um, the third thing you want to do is decide on size. So most wedding planners, and not all of them, you could have a digital one, but most of them are physical still right now because that's just traditionally what people think of when they think of wedding planners. In fact, when you go to Barnes and Noble, they have usually a whole shelf, even in San Diego, which is small, they have a complete up and down, like from top to bottom, shelf dedicated to wedding planning. So people like just going there, picking something out that they like and having it to write things down. You have a lot of things from wedding vendors. Um, I think more people are moving to digital. So in theory, if someone was very digital savvy, they could take their iPad 
or their phone and just take a picture and then just add it into their wedding planner, like their wedding digital planner. Um, so lots of great things there. Uh, you mostly want to make sure if it is going to be physical that you decide if it's going to be a huge extra large like three ring binder one. So in theory, like I said, if you're getting pages from different vendors, they can just three hole punch it themselves and add it in. Or you can make it smaller where it's a folio and they would simply just put things inside of there. Or you can make it spiral where it's large and they could still fit pages in without folding. Um, or you can make it a hardbound. There are many different options, but usually it is like a t-shirt side that's there's either small, medium, or large. So the small one is usually a checklist or some something that can be carried around easily in your purse. Medium is kind of like in between, um, and usually those are pretty thick because you still need to put a lot of information in there. And the third one is an extra large one. Um, now the fourth thing you want to think about is branding. So do you, the biggest question is, do you want this wedding planner to match all of the rest of your branding? Or do you want it to be totally different? So for example, if you're very corporate or you mostly just cater to executives, you can totally have a beautifully uh, rose gold pink, like totally off brand uh, planner, but because it's a wedding, people are a little bit more open to that. They're accepting of that. They expect that. Uh, and that audience, quite honestly, is going to be very different than your executive audience. It's possible your executive planner audience, and this is just this example, might be like, oh, I'm getting married. I want to go ahead and just try out their wedding planner. But most likely, people who are looking for a wedding planner are just looking for a wedding planner, just something pretty, something functional, um, or something small. You know, it really depends on the bride and what her purpose is. So that's what you want to think about mostly with branding. Um, the fifth thing is you want to think about what are you going to put inside? <laughs> what are, like, are you going to put everything in there? Is it going to be more like a workbook? Is it going to be more like a ebook, uh, like a guide, or I shouldn't even say ebook because it could obviously be a physical book uh, where it has a lot of data or is it mostly just a reminder? Um, the other thing is you want to mostly think about with content that it is before, during, and after. So most of the content inside of a wedding planner is I would say 70% of what happens before the wedding, all the planning, picking the, all, all the vendors, writing the vows, getting the dress. And then the there's a small per percentage, I don't want to do math because I'm so bad at it. Like let's say 20% that is the day of the wedding, right? So the ceremony, the schedule, all the other things that you want to plan out ahead of time. And then the last 10% of your wedding planner is usually afterwards. So it will have some prompts in there, reminders, or some Emily posts type of guidelines and thank you cards and give you space to kind of collect names and also to plan the honeymoon. So 70, 20, 10, I think that adds up to 100. So 70% is before, 20% is during the day of, and 10% is afterwards. Number six, you want to think about your design layout. And I would say, you know, if you don't want to get really into design, I used to get really into design on this channel, but now I'm just kind of like, go ahead and outsource it. Just look through other planners. It doesn't even have to be a wedding planner, just any other type of planner with a purpose. See how things are laid out, what you like, what you don't like, and then just hand it off to somebody else. And if you like designing it yourself, then think about joining Planner Academy. Uh, number seven is you want to print and produce it or you want to digitize it and make it digital or make it a printable. Um, and number eight is you want to think about how you're going to get it out to people. Um, so if you are selling this, do you want to market this to individuals? Are you going to use Facebook ads? Because most likely this isn't like a a customer that's going to stay with you forever. It's usually someone that just wants to buy a one off. They buy it, they're happy, they go away, they never come back. Unless you're going to do like a life continuation sort of planners. And the next thing you're going to do is how to buy your first home planner. And then you could do a how to prepare for your first baby planner or the pregnancy planner. And then how to prepare for your second baby. Or I don't even know what else goes on in that whole that whole baby life because I don't have them. But you could go ahead and follow somebody on their whole journey. Um, the other thing that you want to think about is if you're going to market this, you want to collaborate with other people that are kind of more obvious, right? Like and some people do go out and get wedding planners. A lot of people are Googling things right now. They might not even know that they could get a wedding planner or that it would be useful. But while they are shopping for their wedding dress, 
they could just see your wedding planner either in the store because you sold it to them or it's on consignment or um, you could have it at wedding cake shops or it could be given um, as a bonus whenever someone has a wedding, hires a wedding planner, like the actual person wedding planner. Uh, so lots of different people that you can partner up with inside of there. You should also be signing up to go to wedding shows. Those are huge. Uh, really great captive audience as well as advertising inside of bridal magazines and honeymoon destination magazines all right i hope that was helpful and gave you some ideas and got you excited about creating a planner with a purpose if you look around if you look at a lot of the big planner companies aaron condren bloom the first thing they always make is a wedding planner because people are getting married all the time sometimes multiple times. But either way, people love having a wedding planner and or they know someone getting married and they could give it to them as a gift. So wedding planners are always a really great idea. All right, so let's just recap that list really quick. So the first one is choose whether or not you're gonna do a wedding planner based on the client avatar or just do a traditional all everything in the kitchen sink is included or if you're going to do it based on a wedding theme the second thing is determine the format do you want it to be an all-inclusive like full service kind of uh content or do you want it more like a checklist or do you want it more like a book the third one is think about size if it is physical remember if it's digital it doesn't matter um it's just small medium large and then for the fourth one is think about branding it could be your own or you could make one different for the wedding the fifth one is what are you going to put inside remember i had the 70 20 10 rule it is 70 percent before the wedding 20 percent the day of and 10 percent what happens afterwards uh number six is the design and layout look around at other people or just outsource it to somebody number seven is print and produce it or decide how you're going to fulfill it even if it's digital and number eight is how do you market it and I suggested a lot of different collaborations and hooking up with wedding specific vendors as well as going to wedding shows and advertising in wedding magazines all right I hope that was helpful super excited to launch the wedding planner template to you on Monday March 30th remember every time I launch one of these templates they come with everything like all of your social media all of your etsy banners like anything you need to sell it so make sure to join the day it launches because i always have special pricing and special bonuses just for launch day all right i hope everyone's having a fabulous day and i will see you guys tomorrow bye